I'm here at HPE Discover with Mike Orr, and you run a company that runs offshore oil rigs, I understand. We do. And what technology problems do you have that IoT and, and edge computing help you solve? So we, we're all over the world. So usually helicopter rides to transfer equipment out or in or boats or, or whatever is going that direction. So we needed to put something out there that was going to be redundant, reliable, and if my guys needed to get into it and touch it, we could do that remotely. Um, and most of the time that's in a closet. So I needed something that was compact that could basically give me data center in a box that I could run a platform autonomous or if it needed to report up to the mothership to, to the enterprise. So we evaluated uh, tons of hardware out there um, instead of just the basic footprint what was going to take us into the next five years. Um, from a uh, compact, from a compute, from an IoT, from an edge. Uh, we want to push all of our workloads out to the edge and have those run because you can't be down. Um, so we, we, we spent a, a good amount of time evaluating all the providers out there and we settled on HPE EdgeLine. And then uh, also we're dropping in um, the software to find WAN equipment on the Aruba HPE network side as well that they're going to help us administer and, and run that. I would assume one of the one of the core challenges of a oil rig is there's probably not great internet connectivity, whether that's cellular or satellite or, or anything else. So how does how does HPE help you overcome that kind of limitation? So we run in, in a combination of using their equipment and other local providers wherever we're at, whether that be Malaysia, Vietnam, Gulf of Mexico. We run 3G, 4G with VSAT backup to your point. That's why it's important that that compute still happens local. Um, and then when it can get connectivity, it gets out. Um, things like SAP, things like uh, mobile apps, uh, all of our big data. Uh, a platform's no different than, than a carpeted space in, in our world. Um, it's just a lot more difficult to get to. I can't send somebody down the hall to go push a button and reset something or reboot something. So in that context, I'm assuming you're making decisions based on the data that's that's on that, or in that computer, Absolutely. On, the, on the oil rig. What kind of things need to, to happen in order for you to be able, I mean, because there's probably not somebody on site looking at that data and making this decision. That's correct. So how, do you, how does the timing work with something like that? So we have, um, we have controllers that are there on the platforms and they're looking at you know, some of the baseline stuff, but we're also um, running a bunch of analytics coming off of that up to a historian uh, with all the applications that run basically that entire platform. Um, that, that has to be remotely supported. And you also have to have redundancy in the equipment, which is, which is where now it's affordable. It's compact, it's cheap. So if the box, if one part of the box fails, another part picks up. And then that's as simple as the next time we're out there to do maintenance, we replace it. Um, we've never had that without a, a high price tag. Now it's much more affordable. And clouds change the game from, the, from the, the ability to get large amounts of data off of these platforms up to something that we can actually do more of a um, predictive analytics case or a, a historical look back based on the sensors and the data that's out there now. We can actually write applications that run autonomous on these platforms specific to where they're at, what they're operating on, what we're taking a look at versus you know your traditional one size fits all. We can get very targeted now with these little micro ecosystems that run on these platforms. Very cool, thanks Mike. Absolutely.